Good evening. Thank you very much for attending our uh, talk this evening on behalf of the Jesuits of Canada and Jose and Albert and uh, Father Joseph Schneer and myself. We welcome you here and um, hope you enjoy spending the next hour with us. We'll start with our Indigenous land claim. We wish to acknowledge the land on which the Jesuit Sacred Heart House operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. I'll just mention a couple of housekeeping points before we begin. And one is that if you have any questions, please write them in the Q&A button, which will be either on the top or the bottom of your screen, depending on, on um, which device you're using. And then at the last 15 minutes, we'll read those questions uh, for Joe to answer. If you would like to hear this presentation in French, you can um, also click the French button, which would be at the bottom or top. And I'll turn this over to Jose um, in a moment, and he will give those instructions in French to make it easier. Um, this evening after the webinar ends, you will receive in your email box uh, a little survey, and we'd appreciate it if you wouldn't mind just filling out that survey for us uh, to help with our planning in the future. So I'll turn it over to Jose for housekeeping. Thank you, uh, Pat. Um, and I just wanted to remind uh, the audience about a couple of things, as Pat said, and I'll switch to French for this so that uh, uh, part of the audience can understand uh, the instructions and how to switch to a different language. Donc, pour choisir la langue de votre conférence, so to select the language of your presentation, presentation uh, dans les commandes de votre réunion webinaire, cliquez sur interprétation, you click on cliquez sur la langue que vous souhaitez entendre. Si vous êtes sur un appareil mobile, follow, if you have dans les contrôles de votre réunion, device, appuyez sur le plus, uh, sur le petit bouton avec les trois points, the plus et, et après, the appuyez dots sur l'interprétation de la langue. On appuyez sur language la langue que vous souhaitez interpretation and select the language that you wish to listen uh, to. Uh, il y a juste un petit problème. So, C'est pas disponible so lorsque vous accédez à Zoom sur un ordinateur. Interpretation is uh, not uh, available if you don't ask for it. And uh, the second reminder, uh, and I'll just give you a, a few seconds to switch to the other language. If you have any problems, si vous avez des problèmes uh, pour accéder au bouton, uh, vous pouvez Again, écrire à travers le, le bouton access le bouton de conversation. If you have any issues accessing uh, the language of your preference, you can contact me, reach me through the chat box uh, through Zoom. Uh, and if you have any problems, any technical problems of any nature, you can reach out through the chat box. Uh, thank you, Pat. It's my uh, pleasure to introduce our speaker tonight, uh, Father Joseph Schneer. Um, he is a professor emeritus of psychology and psychology of religion at Regis College in Toronto. Professor Schneer is a Jesuit priest whose ministry has centered on teaching, research, and clinical service. Before his appointment to Regis College, he taught psychology at Campion College at the University of Regina, where he specialized in the area of developmental and child clinical psychology. Father Schneer's teaching interests and research at Regis College continue his developmental and clinical orientation by looking at faith development, spirituality, and intimacy, and the interaction of these aspects of life with the Ignatian spiritual exercises across the lifespan. He also continues to be active with spiritual direction and retreat work. Thank you very much for coming, uh, Joe, and I'll turn it over to you.
Thank you very much, Pat. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Monsieur et Mesdames, bienvenue. This evening, I would like to speak especially about the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. Uh, you've heard about his life, about his spirituality, and now we look in more depth at the exercises themselves. As you'll remember from Scott Lewis's talk, St. Ignatius of Loyola undertook his spiritual exercises in the cave at Manresa using both traditional methods and his own development of spirituality in a prayer based on the life of Jesus. And Ignatius's very own experiences of conversion and growth in his desire for intimacy with Jesus and through him with the Trinity. In my exploration of the exercises this evening, I'd like to weave together for you these traditional ways and Ignatius's own personal contribution to the spirituality of his time. And finally, I would like, if I have the time, to suggest that this weaving together of methods and their development, along with Ignatius's own experience, continue to develop through history for the contemporary understanding of the Ignatian spiritual, uh, spiritual exercises. So first of all, to look at the foundations of Ignatius's spirituality. In his classic work, A History of Christian Spirituality, Urban Holmes, an Anglican theologian, described spirituality as a relationship with God through the word and the Holy Spirit, and prayer as a means to develop this relationship. He described four traditional ways of praying, by using our senses, memory, and imagination of creation and the scriptures to discover and grow in our relationship to God, what is classically called the cataphatic or positive way of prayer. Also by interiorly intuiting God's presence, which is my, my thought of what is meant by the apophatic or the negative way of prayer. While well, using our emotions and feelings to relate to God in an affective and an emotional way. And our intellect in understanding this relationship, which is often called the, the speculative way, the thoughtful way. In practice, a person uses a mixture of these four, although one may predominate according to one's personality. And that usually would go very much into that as a psychologist, but I'll spare you that part this evening. For example, though, Ignatius in the spiritual exercises uses especially the memory and the imagination and feelings working together in a positive way of prayer and especially the second, third, and fourth weeks, sort of parts of the exercise in contemplating the life of Christ and reasoning and judgment in the first week to understand creation and sin and sinfulness. And in the second week on meditating on Med Ignatius's following Christ. You'll notice that I said contemplating the life of Christ, a little bit different than sometimes classically a classical idea of contemplation, but really that sort of trying to be present in Christ's presence and living with Christ in, in, that, in, in prayer. And then meditating, but more the usual uh, idea of meditating, of following our thoughts and our logic and thinking, reasoning out things. Holmes, the Anglican theologian, also describes a historical developmental pattern of the spiritual life that Ignatius also followed. In the first week, there is a recognition of our fallen human nature and our own part in and contrition for this fall. And this was called classically the, the purgative way, the purging of one's sinfulness and inclinations 
to evil. In the other weeks of the exercises, our path of salvation through Christ is the illuminative way, sort of a didactic, a teaching way, a way of, of getting to know Jesus. And especially in the fourth week, in our intimate relationship with the risen Lord, the move is towards the unitive way, the way of, at the end of the continuum of that, of the mystics who are caught up into God's presence with God. As Father Scott Lewis mentioned in the first lecture of the series, a manual of spiritual exercises had been written based on this medieval pattern of prayer and on Christ's life by Abbot Garcia Cernonos of Montserrat, where Ignatius began his spiritual pilgrimage. Ignatius's Benedictine confessor and spiritual guide probably made it available to Ignatius. And Ignatius, four year, 400 years ago, used these methods of prayer and developmental process of spirituality in growing in his relationship to Jesus and through Jesus with God. Second part is about Ignatius's own spiritual life. I know that we heard a very deep discussion about that and a lecture on that last week. So let me just say a, a tiny bit about this. Through prayer, fasting, and penance, and with the guidance of his confessor, Ignatius began to develop a more intimate relationship with the Lord over his months at Manresa. A relationship that grew through the rest of his life. He began to understand at this time that he not only yearned, which is that deep desire that Father Carrier described in last week's lecture that directed his path for a relationship with others, but with one who transcends all, one who is all in all. In scripture, in our communities of family, family and church, in our personal history, God discloses God's self to us. And in our intimacy with God, our spirituality calls for self-disclosure, commitment and faithfulness in our life with one who knows the inmost depths of our hearts. Ignatius's vision at the river Cardenaire, an illumination that Ignatius regarded as foundational in his relationship to the Trinity was key to this relationship with God. As with all intimacy, it ultimately meant a mutual self-disclosure of self in which God himself took the first step. One of the privileged times of such intimacy is what we call our prayer an interactive process between revelation in its many forms, for example, scripture, creation, our friends and family. And this intimate relationship is integral to all of our life so that our human relationships serve as foundational to our relationship with God. The relationship with God therefore has all the richness, intricacy, and tension of human relationships. In the context of the spiritual exercises, the thread of Ignatius's conversion call and commitment is woven into the second week especially and vividly reflects his own spiritual journey. Now I'll turn to the spiritual exercises. As you know, the spiritual exercises, it usually takes around 30 days of prayer, is 30 days of prayer. And the, there are four weeks, not actually, uh, as we know, seven day weeks, because they can vary according to the director who is, is leading the person in the exercises. But each week has a certain, a certain movement, a certain theme. So the first week focuses on the realization that humankind has been created by God and recreated 
by the Son who saved us from our human brokenness. As the initial statement of this week, called the, the principle and foundation, this is exactly what it is, the very foundation of our prayer. Ignatius reminds the retreatant that God as our creator is the source and ground of all being. In an article in the way Canadian Jesuit John English, very important in the development in our time of the exercises, writes that as a response to the overflowing love of the Trinity, we humans in kinship with all other things of the universe are created to praise reverence and serve the Trinity in all our life endeavors. And so to discover the fullness of our lives on earth and in heaven. The invited response is a relationship of trust and of faith. The realization of this foundation is the first and basic prerequisite for an intimate relationship with God. Ignatius helps the retreatant to deepen this realization by his instruction that during the retreat and in daily life, the retreatant should review in a daily practice this principle and foundation through a prayer that he called the examine, uh, an examination of the day or the morning or the afternoon, depending when the person was, was praying that examine. And it's a process of, observe, of observing, inferring, and evaluating one's response to God's presence in life. Thanking God for this awareness, asking forgiveness for a lack of awareness and of attention, and ending with a renewed intention for the future. In a parallel way, going a little bit ahead of ourselves. For the colloquy or conversation at the end of the first exercise, Ignatius instructs the retreatant to ask before Jesus on the cross, what have I done for the Lord? What am I doing for the Lord? What ought I do for the Lord? And here Ignatius introduces that personal thread of the exercises that he'll continue throughout the second week, this one that weaves in with the, the ancient the, the ancient purgative way and into the illuminative way. At the end of the second exercise of the first week, a meditation on personal sin, the retreatant is to consider how all creatures, how have they permitted me to live and sustain me in my life? So the retreatant realizing their, their brokenness, their sinfulness. The last exercise of the retreat returns to this theme in the contemplation to attain love right at the very end of the exercises. And again, asks the retreatant to reflect how God works and labors for me and all creatures on the face of the earth. You see that theme keeps on coming. Father English in his article remarks that in our prayerful reflection on this mystery of providence, we come to enter deeply into the personal activity of the Trinity, into the interpersonal relationship, which is the Trinity, the activity and relationship with call, which calls us into being and sustains us in our personhood. This contemplation is the material of Ignatius's thread. It's the ordinary mysticism that Father Carrier spoke of last week that ordinary mysticism of, of uh, a union of, of an awareness of God's presence in our life, which is the goal of the spiritual life. If we go now to the second week, we see that it follows Christ in order to imitate him. In Paul's words, we are putting on the Lord Jesus. It begins that thread of Jesus' life, which is woven into with Ignatius' life, the, 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 the sort of the, the texture, the material of the, the exercises. It begins with then the thread of Jesus' life in the incarnation, 
when the Trinity sends the Son to save humankind. And I want to show you, um, and Jose will help me with this, an image this evening of um, a sculpture, a photograph of a sculpture that was commissioned at Campion College uh, about 30 years ago. And it's by a, um, a Saskatchewan sculptress, uh, Lorraine Malik, uh, who, as we asked, as we commissioned her to do something in honor of Ignatian, the Ignatian year, uh, thought that she wanted to do this scene. As you can see, it, Ignatius is at the bottom, and the three large figures are her imagination. In one way, she's being very, as the ancients said, cataphatic, imaginative. How, how would she ima imagine the Trinity looking, as Ignatius said, looking down on the world? And what, what do they see in the world? Well, in the photograph, in the center, sort of going, cascading down through the sculpture, are human beings. And the human beings are not very happy. They're, they're struggling with one another. It looks like they're struggling with the world there. And, and Ignatius talks about that in, the, in, the, in the, the, the prelude to the incarnation, that the Trinity looked down on the, the world and saw humankind in warring with one another, angry and, and spiteful and jealous and envious and greedy with one another. And of course, the, the Trinity, in its love for humankind, then decides, this is uh, Ignatius's imagination, of course, decides that God will become one with us in Jesus. And the Son comes then in, into our world as one like us, as a human being like us. And so in this sort of, of physical representation of part of a meditation, uh, Lorraine tried to, to, to grasp what would, this, what would this look like in a sculpture. And of course, you see Ignatius at the bottom and with the idea then of this is all within his imagination, within he's trying to understand this love of the Trinity that's poured out for us. Thanks, Jose. We can, we can go back to the usual now. So through the contemplation of the gospel scenes as Jesus proclaims the good news, he receives, the retreatant receives um, or sees that Jesus heals the sick and confronts evil. And he, he goes following after Jesus right to the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. In these meditations from the incarnation through the nativity, through the infancy of Jesus, into the public life, Jesus' baptism, all the, which, which you know so very well from the gospels, Ignatius is encouraging the retreatant to follow after Jesus. He's invited, she's invited to be present in their imagination at these scenes, hearing and seeing Jesus and conversing with him in prayer, even in the contemplation on the, on the nativity that we're preparing for now in this Advent time. Ignatius says, see the, see the ba little babe in the, on the straw in this, in this cow shed and maybe even even take him up into your arms so the, that you can see there the 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 idea of that ignatius had of of intimacy of, of even that he would would take the, the the child jesus the infant jesus into his arms that the closeness that 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 represents in his in the prayer in the, this entering into these scenes so the retreatant is invited to be present in their imagination at these scenes, hearing and seeing Jesus and conversing with him in prayer. His journey through the life of Jesus is summed up in the, this very simple prayer that sometimes the retreatant will say, asking that the retreatant might follow 
he says, follow him more nearly in order to know him more clearly and to love him more dearly. It's a very simple way, but it's, it's or simple phrases, but it's, it's the, 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 the activity of that second week of following and, and listening and seeing with all of, all of, our, all of our senses in order to love more, more dearly. In these weeks, choices also have to be made. And this is where Ignatius is, the Ignatian thread of the exercise comes in and considers the, and, and within these meditations of, that Ignatius called the call or within the exercises, they're called the call, the two standards, the three classes of people and the three kinds of humility. After the meditations on the incarnation, as we get into Jesus' public life, Ignatius sort of pauses that part of the, the second week and has us, well, right at the beginning, actually, before we get into that, to the, the meditation on the call, but then the other ones within the, the second week. So that before the second week begins, Ignatius describes in a, a, a meditation using our imagination or but also our our reasoning describes an earthly leader who presents his invitation in the following words it's my will to serve the whole world conquering all evil through love and thus it is my will to serve the whole world to end and 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 thus to enter the glory of god Therefore, whoever wishes to come with me must be content to labor with me, that by following me in suffering, that person might follow me in glory. So that was the initial call of a leader leading into the second week. And in the second week proper, the call is further specified by Christ in the meditation on the two standards, the standard of Christ and the standard of Satan. Jesus addresses those who would follow his banner, his standard, rather than that of the devil. And he says, consider the address of Christ our Lord to all those servants and friends sent on this mission, charging them to try to help all people, first by encouraging them to the highest spiritual poverty, and even to actual poverty if God chose that for it, chose them for it. Secondly, they should encourage them to desire insults and contempt, for from these spring humility. So Jesus, as the king, is, is a humble, uh, poor person who invites person, all humankind in to join him in his humanity, into his emptying out of divinity in, in the incarnation. A response is invited to follow Jesus in, in the poverty of the incarnation and the humiliation eventually of the passion of the cross. For Ignatius, the closest following would be to imitate Jesus by a total giving of self. Such giving is described in a third and fourth meditation on what's called the three classes of people and the three kinds of humility. How generous to be though. How generous are people? How, what are they willing to, to give of themselves? And then the three kinds of humility. How deeply does that giving go of giving one's very self ultimately to God? To follow Jesus most closely is to desire and choose poverty with Christ poor rather than riches oppression with Christ oppressed rather than honors. And in the, the exercises, Ignatius says, I desire to be considered worthless and even a fool for Christ who suffered such treatment before me rather than to be thought wise or clever in this world. So you can see in, in <laughs> the, the depths at which Ignatius entered into this relationship of trying to Follow Christ with his whole being in, the, in, the, in these actions, in this type of humility, of this type of generosity. 
Such imitation of Christ implies a very deep, intimate, and mutual love. Such a love grows as the retreatant follows after Christ, seeing and hearing what he is about. So the, after these sort of interlude of these meditations, he goes back to the contemplations, seeing in the imagination the scenes of Jesus curing people and preaching to people, bringing people back to life. It's in this redemptive re relationship that we receive the evidence of love. God as Savior in Jesus' passion and death loves his friends by laying down his life. Ignatius emphasizes this by stressing that Jesus does this for me. And in the exercises, he constantly says, and does this for, for, for me. And, and you can imagine Ignatius trying to grasp this. You know, this rough soldier as he begins out, man who's been probably anger and warlike in, in battles, and, and he's understanding that Jesus does this for me, for me and all of my all of my my loneliness and all of my my actual poverty of of who I am. Ignatius places a special time of conscious decision at the towards the end of the second week or what he calls an election during which the retreatant considers how he or she is personally called to imitate Christ and consciously decides to take up this call if he or she decides to follow this leader then the cross is an integral part of the way so as we go then into work week three, which is uh, a contemplation of the passion, and week four, which is a contemplation of the resurrected Lord, we can, there, you, you can see the energy that's going into this. Uh, the retreatant praying about, can, can they really follow, how, how closely can I follow the Lord? How, how can I be more like the Lord? Um, or those of you who have done the exercises, you you know the power of that, because this is this is part. It's, it's in silence, in isolation, uh, that you, you're doing this, and and so it's it's very it's a very intense time. Those meditations within the second week and in the third week. So the third and fourth week focus on the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord and are a time of confirming the prayer and direction of the second week. Ignatius personalizes Christ's suffering for the retreatant, following the gospel, the, the passion narratives. At the end of the first meditation in the first, of, in the first week, the retreatant contemplated Jesus on the cross as the one who became human and died for us. Week, the fourth week is spent with the risen Lord and ends with the contemplation to attain divine love. Work, work, weeks, the third and fourth weeks are weeks leading to that third way that Holmes talks about, describes the unitive way, that way of of that Father Carrier talked about again as that ordinary mysticism, united with Christ in his passion, death, and resurrection. It's in this redemptive relationship that he, we receive the evidence of love. God as Savior and Jesus' passion and death loves his friends by laying down his life. And the, medita the meditations or the contemplations there are, are very much experiencing in in oneself what what Christ is suffering for for us. Ignatius is always adding that for us, in, in doing this for us. The following an imitation of Christ calls for service then by the follower and friend, and is is a strengthening of that election. It's made at the end of the, the second week. It's sort of confirming that election. This is, this, these are the consequences. This, but this is, and this will be done though with, 
in companionship with Jesus. A reflection on the cost of the cross that may be felt in this everyday caring of, for the world. So it prepares in a way the retreatant to go, to go back uh, into, into daily life. Uh, but in a way with a whole new um, relationship, a renewed relationship, a strengthened relationship with, with Jesus. Finally, well, that one other part that, that I should mention here, and, and, and that um, is the the contemplation for attaining love, and that's right at the end of the, the fourth um, the contemplation to attain love. That what that is is really seeing how uh, Ignatius says how God labors for us in all of creation, and again that. The, the question that comes up in other parts of the exercises, and, and what will I do for this one who labors for me, who has lived for me, come to be human for me, has lived for me, has died for me, suffered and died for me, and is now risen and invites me to join in that risen life. What will I, and, and seeing God, that God's love in all things in this contemplation of, of all creation, as I mentioned before, it's something that um, a person might recall each day in the exam. How am, how am I, how am I uh, fulfilling that union? How am I using this, these gifts that God has given? The last part is uh, just a short part. And it's uh, just to say something about how the, the exercise is developed through the centuries. So for some who followed the exercises, like Francis Xavier and Peter Fav, who were with, who were, and we would say at university with Ignatius, much younger than Ignatius, and the sort of young men, whereas Ignatius was well into maturity and, and trying and learning and studying at the Sorbonne. Uh, these first com companions, Ignatius, encouraged them and, and, and directed them in the exercises and the, in the personal one-to-one -one, uh, relationship and did this with many of the other university students uh, at, at that time and, and other people, other men and women who came to him to be led within this prayer that they, they saw at, at its beginning of the exercises. So for some like Francis Xavier and Fav, Ignatius's first companions at the Sorbonne, the exercises led to an initial awakening to friendship with God that built on the love that they manifested and strengthened. For others like Francis Borgia, St. Francis Borgia, who was a Spanish Duke, a Spanish Grande, they meant a change of life and conversion in which longstanding wounds were healed and a new friendship began. And you can see through the movement how both things is sort of, 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 of in a way for the younger men, the younger person, almost the first love, this first love of, of God. And with an older person like, like Borja, uh, it was a, a reformed life, of taking up a new life after, after having had a very full life before really finding this intimacy, this relationship with Jesus. As Ignatian and the first companions gradually grew in their life and ministry, the society was founded, the Society of Jesus was founded and, and grew in, in their time quite, quite rapidly. And with the, re the realization that they were developed, they were developing a religious order there was a need to formalize the life and prayer of the companions, as well as their work for the salvation of others. And this is when the exercises began to be formally written and sort of, uh, as I imagine as they would say, sort of edited, and what parts and how would they be given. And so there was, this was an exciting time of the beginning, the birth of the uh, exercises that uh, 
would be given to others, not just five to, minutes, uh, Joe. Five minutes. Thank you, thank you. Not just to the members of the society. The exercises became and through an integral part of the introduction into the life of the so society and the formation of new companions. So no, all every novice made the, the exercises. Um, some directed by the, the first fathers of the society. Um, at the same time, the first companions and the new members of society carried the exercises to the countries of Europe. They were spread out. They went, went everywhere uh, within Europe, even, in, even to, to Russia, even to, to Britain. They went off. Ignatius went to, to Britain at one time too, to, to beg. And then to Asia, so, uh, Francis Xavier, whose feast we'll celebrate on Thursday, and, and Africa. The, so all of the world, and then eventually to the New World uh, in our own martyrs, Canadian martyrs, uh, American martyrs. The exercises were given individually to new members of the society and to other clerics and lay people. So the, the way of doing the exercises was very much as, as, as Ignatius did them. But initially, the direct, this direct, initially this way of directing the exercises one-to-one -one, um, gradually was, became more, as more and more people wanted to, to experience the exercises, um, became more of a group and a preach sort of a way. And so gradually the exercises became as maybe some of us would remember, and I, might, I remember as a novice, having the exercises really preached to us of the whole group of novices. It was only until the middle of the 20th century, really, although there's a could be a lot of history told here of, of the contributions of many people, where um, the form of giving the exercises returned to the direct end of one on one. And this was really through the work in the English part of the world of, of Jesuits like uh, Father Peters in Belgium and Father Peter Paul Kennedy in England. Their research and work of these Jesuits and also many other, other Jesuits as well, um, influenced Canadian Jesuits like David Aslan and John English, John Veltri, Gilles Cousson of, of, uh, from the retreat house in Quebec and then in South in Central America, and John Wickham of, in Montreal. And they went back to the, the form of personally directed one-on-one -on -one direction. The intention of their ministry is that of Ignatian, of Ignatius, and carried out at spiritual spirituality centers that these men founded, these men and women founded. In contemporary spiritual ministry, spiritual guides are able to add both the historical research on the exercises and a deeper awareness of the psychological dimensions, I have to put my plug in here, of the relationship that a retreat director encourages, psychological as well as a spiritual development of a relationship with God. So Patricia, you didn't have to stop me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe. It was a pleasure. Um, we have some, uh, quite a few uh, questions. I can understand that. Um, so I'll, I'll see if we can get through them all, and I'll join a couple, uh, a couple together because they're quite similar. The first one, is meditation for Ignatius the same as Lectio Divina? I, I think that they're, there's, they're, they're relatives, but whereas in Lexio Divina, the, the emphasis is more on the actual written word, the, the, the scriptures, the word of God in the scriptures, and paying close attention to that in, in, in contemplation, in, in nation contemplation, it, it's more that we take the word and use our imagination to enter into that scene, as I described a little bit from the the meditate or the contemplation of the of the nativity, of being there and with. So, 
yes, but in, a, in diff, two different sort of ways. One more with the imagination, one more probably with the reasoning part. But what, what does this mean, you know, the scripture? And in the, 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 the meaning comes in the contemplation from being there with experiencing it. Well, and Lexio Divina can lead to that too. So they're, they're not, they're, they're cousins. Can you speak about the psychology of asceticism? Well, the psychology of asceticism. How oh, that, I, I think in the, in the exercises, when, um, especially in the two standards, in the following the, the one of, of the leader, but then especially of the, of the uh, two standards and of the three types of humility. Really what Ignatius is calling us to is a, a, an ascetic life, to a, a life of, today we would talk of a, a life, you know, from um, Laudato Si um, and the, the Francis's Pope Francis's latest uh, encyclical that of, of living in in simplicity and and understanding, if not having actual poverty. Although Ignatius actually says, "Well, pray even for actual poverty, <laughs> you might not be given it, but to desire that simplicity." And so, I think that that would be have a connection with. Asceticism, yet with uh, as, uh, ascetic life, uh, and and of course today that's so important because we realize that so many of our sisters and brothers live that life without <laughs> having aspired to it. That's that's their life. So as, and that's part of the the exercises too of being called to that. Do the spiritual exercises play a major role in your own personal relationship with God? And what part of the exercises has touched you? <laughs> well, self-revelation. That's changed over the years. I think as a, a, this is my 60th year in the, as a Jesuit. So I'm going way back. I think as a novice, I was really caught up with the with the um, the 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 cont contemplative part of following after seeing what it was a new way for me to pray as a as a young person, and but over the years and as I've I've grown older, uh, the 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 part of what what is. My prayer now is, is much more of trying to be in that intimate relationship with 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 God, uh, with Jesus. So I'm I'm very caught up with that. Of uh, and of course the Scripture helps because that's telling us we see how Jesus is with us. But rather than just uh, uh, contemplating the scene or of the Gospels, of actually being there as a sort of hopefully a, a friend of, of the Lord of um, but at least that's that's that would that's my sort of desire to do that I don't know how well I do that <laughs> but, but it, it it is just as you are with a friend of the attentiveness and but also the the ease that comes with that too of just being there you know how with friends you can just sometimes just sit there and you don't say too much or you're just there and and it's that type of 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 experience of the exercises now so what training or credentials should a person have if they want to give the exercises especially the 19th annotation well there there are lots of very good programs um, I know um, uh, Trevor Scott, one of the younger Jesuits who spent time in the Atlantic provinces, said that they, they, uh, 
the formation there is really uses John, John Wickham's manuals and books on, uh, I know at Guelph they're more centered, the training center at Guelph at Ignatius, um, our Loyola retreat house, uh, that um, they, I suspect, are much more um, on with John English's books and way and John Valtry's books. Uh, so there, there are training programs. Um, I know, and uh, uh, Father Cousson had in Quebec City at the Retreat House a very, um, a very uh, a strong training program uh, for the. So I would say. At, at least to ex if to give the exercises at least to have training and uh, that those sort of pro programs for example um, uh, Guelph not during this time but usually offers sometimes like a nine month live-in training program where a person makes the exercises then then um, gives has practice is with supervision giving a a weekly retreat and then eventually giving their exercises. Yeah, very much the, the, the Jesuit scholastics would do that, in those pro, that type of a program. So in Canada and, and even more so in the United States, there are many, many different programs. I think it's very helpful. Now, this is the, it's, it's a bit of, a, of the privileged part of that a person also have some theology. So a good understanding of scripture Scott, Scott Lewis would hardly agree with me <laughs> and to take his course, especially. Uh, but, but also um, the, the Christology and, and even uh, the theology of the Trinity. And so all of that enriches what um, um, the, the retreat leader or the director can give to the person because there's a real foundation uh, there. Now, and of course, the other foundation is just the person's own prayer that, that, that yeah. There's a, a saying of nemo dat qua non habit in Latin. Nobody gives what they don't have. And so if a person doesn't have a spiritual life, so that of course is part of the whole training program of, of, of a deep uh, uh, awareness of scripture, of, of, of the life with Jesus. Is it possible to do these four weeks from our own home during this time of COVID and for Advent? I think that, that, we, that would be hard, I think, like to do it uh, as we're doing this, as Zoom would have to it'd be fairly intense and maybe tiring. It, usually the, the, the exercises in everyday life would be over a period and usually it starts say at the beginning in in october or so so that we come to the to the second week around this time in advent so that the liturgy fits into it as well uh, certainly making i know that guelph and i'm sure other other retreat places are are giving retreats by uh, remotely I'm, I'm not sure if anybody's doing and it may be very well be that they the ingenuity is 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 very abundant they may people may be giving the, the ex, full exercises by it'd, it'd be it'd be an interesting experiment to see and it would make it if i can more. if i could well, interject sure. joe um we are the communications office who I represent uh, is in touch with all of the retreat centers and we're indeed offering uh, the spiritual exercises in different versions in daily life, weekend retreats, eight day retreats, uh, and so on remotely. I am myself doing the daily annotation, the 19th annotation, and uh, it is different. But uh, the retreat centers are offering this, and I have posted the links to the Good. retreat center sites Great. so that if anyone Great. wants to inquire, they can do that. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. That's very, very helpful. I just know our sort of own little local situation. How can we detect and discern the nudges of the Holy Spirit versus our own pulsions, hopes, and fears as we progress on the path of our own spiritual development. 
Well, the exercises helps with that. That's sort of what Ignatius called discerning the spirits. And uh, right at the, Scott talked about that a great deal in the first lecture uh, about how Ignatius learned to discern the spirits. How the, the good spirit was one who gave peacefulness and, con and contentment, whereas the, the bad spirit, the evil spirit, really gave um, uh, lack of peace, disruption, and unhappiness, and well, and it changes as, it, as you go through the, the exercises. But um, so um, again, the, the spiritual exercises is a good way to learn <laughs> discernment of spirits because of course the, the bad spirit, the evil spirit is not too happy about you praying all the time and getting, looking for this intimate relationship with, with the Lord. And so you have to discern, okay, what's, what's, just as Ignatius had to discern, was this life he was leading at Manresa, was that the life he was going to continue on for the rest of his life in this cave at Manresa, or was he called to something else? And so this, this discernment of spirit, is this, this from the good spirit, or is it from the evil spirit? Thank you. This seems difficult for married people. Are there Ignatian spirituality resources for married men or women who have a deep relationship with their partners, but the partner may have a weak or non-existent desire to enter into a deep relationship with Jesus? Again, I think maybe Jose could be helpful, but I think there are there there are retreats for for married couples, and I suspect even the exercises. I'm, I'm not so familiar with all the intricacies of the retreat houses. That, that's, that's, a, that's a more complicated. Um, see, I, I, I see my sort of theology of marriage is that that's one of the, the, one of the ways of growing in intimacy with God. Uh, and you can see where that's, it's a, it, no. Whether the, whether the other the other partner has to be conscious of that, or just actually a, a husband or wife seeing God's love in 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 their husband or wife in their partner, and that so that's a that that would be uh, uh, that would be yeah, would take a little bit of of discussion about how that would be you know, uh, but that's it. it it, it's, I think it's possible, yeah. What does Christian meditation have to do with mantra maranata? I'm not sure what mantra maranata is, but sometimes within, if, if it is, if the mantra is sort of a repetition, something like the Jesus prayer, you know, um, Jesus have mercy on me, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. It's that in the Byzantine, where Byzantine form of prayer, uh, but I'm I'm not sure. I don't know how to answer that because I would have to know have, have some familiarity with what exactly that means. Uh, the... uh, I think that's all the questions we have time for uh, tonight. So. I really would like to thank uh, Father Joseph Schneer for his presentation. Um, very, very interesting. And uh, you've let us know that we have a lot more to learn on this uh, deep, deep topic. And of course, I found out I have a heck of a lot more to learn. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pat. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, and thank thank you everyone. Merci, Madame et Monsieur. Yes. And, uh, I'd like to thank everybody uh, who attended, and we look forward to seeing you next week when Father Peter Besson will uh, be presenting uh, for our last session. Jose, I'm going to turn it over to Jose. Yeah, just two last things. The first one is that a recording of the webinar will be shared 24 hours after the event. You will get an email tomorrow with the link. 
And the second one is that as we posted in the chat box and I said earlier, you can feel free to contact any of our retreat centers or spirituality centers because they are still offering the spiritual exercises in different, different ways, online and offline, depending on COVID rel related regulations and on the preferences of the participant. So feel free to do that, uh, find out more and uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank, Thank you. you. And we'll see you again Tuesday, December the 8th. Good night.